Are you happy with your decision to pursue PA? A hundred percent. Yeah, I feel it's in everyday life, you know, it can, it can be stressful, but then when you look back on it and think of how much you wanted, or personally for me, how much I wanted to be in this spot and how hard I worked for it, and like now I'm actually here, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, I'm very happy. Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a second year PA student at the University of Manitoba. So I'm from Manitoba. I live just outside of Winnipeg in Narrell, uh, so it's about 10 minutes outside of the city. Um, I grew up there my whole life. I went to the University of Winnipeg uh, for my undergrad degree, which I did a Bachelor in Science. Uh, I did my Honours Project at Cancer Care Manitoba, so I did a bit of research before I graduated. Um, and then in terms of the PA program, so I had applied the, my last year of undergrad. Um, I didn't get an interview, I didn't get in, so I had a year off. Um, I worked at the Movement Centre of Manitoba, which is working with uh, children and adults with neurological motor disabilities. And then I had reapplied the next year, got an interview, and then got into the program. Um, how did you hear about the PA profession initially? I heard about it in my third year of undergrad. So I knew I was interested in medicine, I wasn't 100% said that that was what I wanted to do, was to go to med school. And then I had heard of a person I knew, a family friend, who was in the program. So I had reached out to her and got a bit more information from her on the program and what the profession was. And as soon as I heard about it, I was like, hey, this is, this is more like me. This is what I need to do. Are you considering or contemplating other careers at the time? Once I found out about the PA program, that was kind of 100% what I wanted to do. But before that, I was kind of pre-med. But I was never as passionate about the idea of going to medicine to med school as I was about PA. So, which PA schools did you apply to? Just U of M, Just University of Manitoba. Yeah. Okay. So, in the year off that you had, you're technically mm. a reapplicant. Um, yeah. What did you do differently that you think made you stand out? So, I think I really had to work on my application. So, I didn't get an interview. Um, I was pretty confident that if I did get an interview that I was passionate enough that that would come through so it was more so my application I wanted to work on. I didn't have a lot of experience um, working with people kind of in I guess a healthcare setting. I had volunteered a lot at hospitals so I increased that in my year off. I looked for a job where I was working more hands-on kind of in a provider way with um, with people, so I found this job. I thought it was a great opportunity. I never worked with people with disabilities. I was very new coming into it and didn't know what to expect, but I absolutely loved it, and that kind of solidified, like I need a job working with people and helping people. Um, in addition, I also had increased my GPA, so my last year of undergrad got added onto my new application, um, and I seeked out a mentor to kind of help me with my personal statement and my overall application as well, which I think made a huge difference. Uh, do you mind sharing your GPA? Uh, yeah, so we have the adjusted GPA at U of M. So my adjusted GPA was 3.8 on a 4.5 scale, and my overall GPA in undergrad was 3.6. What is that equivalent to in um, letter grades? Um, I think a B plus is 3.5, and a 4 is an A, and then an A plus would be 4.5. So the competitive GPA to get in, I think was around 3.5, but I know our class had, I found this out well after, had quite a bit higher average GPA. It was, I think, 4.0, which um, I was, I guess, quite a bit below that applying, but I don't think it really hindered my abilities in the program, so. Mm -hmm. Were there any key differences that you had studying in order to up your grades? In the last, so I think just really, in the first few years of undergrad, I look back on this now and kind of can see why my GPA was a bit lower. So I wasn't 100% passionate about what I was working towards in terms of med school. Um, so I was never really that dedicated to school. And then when I found out about the PA program, I looked at the requirements, the GPA requirements, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. I was like, hey, I have to step my game up. I really have to apply myself if this is what I want. So that was kind of always in the back of my mind. And I think that really motivated me towards the end of undergrad. Uh, what kind of extracurriculars and leadership activities were you involved in undergrad? So I volunteered at two different hospitals um, all throughout my undergrad. I was a part of chemistry club. Um, I played a lot of sports, which I still continue on throughout PA school. So I was played basketball, I played soccer, I coached high school basketball as well. 
Did you have exposure to speaking or shadowing PAs or other PA students uh, before getting in? I had shadow, I've shadowed three PAs before getting in. So one was in primary care. She was kind of the one mentoring me through the application process. I had shadowed a PA in cardiac surgery and also in pediatrics. How did you come across those opportunities? So the one, the first one, I, she was the one who I first found out about the PA program through. So it was kind of through family, friends and connections. Uh, I reached out to her and she took me on. Um, the second one in cardiac surgery, one of my friends, also through friends kind of, I had heard about her and got connected with her. And then the third one was kind of a unique situation. So I volunteered at the hospital um, in day surgery and um, I would just basically change beds uh, and clean and stuff like that. But I made good connections with the nurses there. I did that for about two years. So we would always talk about what I wanted to do in PA programs and they're like, oh, PAs are so great. And I was talking to them about kind of how looking for people to shadow and what I was working on. And one of the nurses um, knows, I think it was Trevor Stone actually, and reached out to him, uh, sent him an email and said, I have this um, uh, undergrad student who's looking for some shadowing opportunities. And there was a new program that the University of Manitoba had put out for shadowing um, opportunities for pre-PA students. So it was just kind of in the preliminary stages. So I got connected with some contacts and eventually found somebody to shadow. So that one was kind of through a bit of networking. <laughs> Were there any books, websites, or resources that you used to help you prepare for admissions? I don't know if there was any books. For the interview though, I did use the Doing It Right book to help prepare um, in terms of medical ethics. For the application, I did use a lot of websites that I had kind of found through social media. Uh, so I was big following people on Instagram and using the Facebook page for resources and reaching out to other current students for tips and advice um, and watching YouTube videos to prepare for the um, MMIs and the interviews were really helpful as well. MMI can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what was your approach for preparing for the MMI? Uh, I actually thought the MMIs were really fun. I think I was like the only person, but I really enjoyed it after it. Um, my approach to preparing, so I had practiced with friends, um, family as well. We would kind of go through questions. I also, when I was practicing on my own, I would write my answer out instead of just think through it or speak it out because then I could look back and see what I, I had said and almost edit it in a way um, by writing it out. I had also, um, I had someone recommend that I videotape myself speaking so you can kind of find all your flaws. Um, so that was another way I'd prepared reading about medical ethics. I had taken a course on it in undergrad, but I, the Doing It Right book I found was really helpful for refreshing on kind of ways to approach situa situations. And there's definitely stations in the MMI when I was answering questions where I was like, I remember this in the book. This helped me a lot. So that helped. Do you have any tips for students struggling between, you know, should I pursue PA or should I pursue MD? I think you really have to consider what you want in life. So when I was a bit earlier in undergrad, I never really, I was young and I wasn't thinking of, I guess, my future in terms of like a family and um, wanting family time even with my own like parents and siblings and friends. Um, and then as I got a bit older, I could kind of start to picture that part of my life. And I, it was really important to me when I had exams and I had to study and I couldn't go to family events or outings, it, like the way I felt, I guess, I felt like I was really missing out. So I had to really consider what my life would be like if I did go into medicine. And I think I just realized that a work-life balance was really important to me. Any words of encouragement for pre-PAs that are just starting their journey and looking into admissions? Yeah, I, um, I would say don't be discouraged if you don't get in the first time. So I'm a second time applicant that obviously worked out in my favor reapplying. I also think, um, I hugely believe that if you're reapplying that you know, the program notices that and sees that you're that uh, driven, I guess, or passionate about this to come back and try again and again. And, you know, there's people who have applied more than two times, like three times, and they got in on the third try. And I don't think it makes any difference. It's no, you know, there's no age limit and there's a great age, age range of people in the class. So don't be discouraged uh, or set back if you're not accepted the first time.